Hello YouTube and welcome to the next route learning video. On today's journey we're going to be on the London to Brighton route and we're going to be going from Brighton to London Victoria in a network southeast class 421. The total distance for the journey today is just under 50 and 3 quarter miles and the journey should take around an hour. We're going to be calling at Preston Park, Hassocks, Burgess Hill, Wivelsfield, Haywards Heath, East Croydon and London Victoria. The class 421 was built between 1964 and 1972 at Brell York. There were a total of 166 of these units built and the maximum speed is 90 miles per hour. The weight of the unit is 150 tonnes with a total power output of 1000 horsepower. Once in the cab of the class 421 you can see just how old it looks and so we have three dials in front of us on the dashboard, the two on the right are the most important, the one on the right being the speedometer which isn't quite accurate as it tends to read our speed as actually higher than what we're travelling. But for the purposes of driving without the HUD in this video we're going to go by what the speedometer says. In the middle we have the brake cylinder pressure gauge which shows us how hard the brakes are applied. So as I apply the brakes as you can see now the needle climbs. I try not to go above about 40 when making a standard brake application. To our left here is the brake handle itself. There are, there are two braking systems on this handle. The electro pneumatic system which I was just operating. And now if I release the brake, we also have an automatic air brake on this handle. So if you turn it to a complete right angle and then let go, you'll see that the brake cylinder pressure hasn't climbed. And now if I move it one step, it will slowly climb up. Now if I move it back one step, it will hold the brake pressure right there. And then to release the brakes, you have to move it all the way to the released position again. In front of us there we have the horn control. Because I'm using the Armstrong Powerhouse sound pack, I have a two-tone horn. Pressing space gives one tone, and then pressing B gives the other tone. And now to our right we have the reversing handle, which we'll put in forward before we move. And then we have the power handle, which has steps one to four on it. Step one is known as shunt. Step two is known as series. Step three is known as parallel and step 4 is known as weak field. So you'll use step 1 power up to about 3 or 4 miles per hour we'll, then we'll go into step 2 which applies up to around 25 to 30 miles per hour we will then increase the power handle to step 3 until we're doing around 45 to 50 miles per hour where we'll finally go into step 4 or weak field. Departing Brighton, the starting speed limit is 25 miles per hour, and we've got around one and a quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Preston Park. As we reach 25 miles per hour, I'm now going to shut off power to allow the train to coast. The line now turning off to the right is the East Coastway line towards Lewis, Seaford, Eastbourne and Hastings. And we're now passing on the left, Lovers Walk Maintenance Depot. The speed limit is now going up to 40 miles per hour. However, as we're on a 12 coach train, it will take a little while until the rear of the train has passed the speed board. And in fact, the point at which we can accelerate is at the next signal just coming up. speed limit is now going up to 75 miles per hour.
going to shut off power at this signal to allow the train to coast. And joining us from the left is the line from Hove and the east, sorry, west coastway route from Portsmouth, Bogner and Littlehampton. You can now see the platform at Preston Park just coming up, so I'm now going to apply the brakes. Seeing as we are a 12 coach train, we will be stopping right at the end of the platform. Departing Preston Park, the starting speed limit is 75 miles per hour, and we've got around five and three quarter miles to go to the next stop, which is Hassocks. Tunnel, which is the first of six tunnels we'll go through on this line. As we reach towards 75 miles per hour, and are going to go into step three of power. However, on this train, if you need to reduce power, say from weak field to parallel, you need to move the power handle all the way back from four to zero, and then back up to three. You can't just move from four to three to reduce the power. Speed limit is now going up to 90 miles per hour.
approaching Clayton Tunnel, which is the longest tunnel on the line. Departing Hassocks, the starting speed limit is 90 miles per hour, and we've got around 2 miles to go to the next stop, which is Burgess Hill. As we reach the brick over bridge that you can see ahead of us, at that point we'll be around three quarters of a mile from Burgess Hill, so I'm going to shut off power as we pass under the bridge, and then we're going to break for Burgess Hill as we see the platform in the distance. You can now see the platform of Burgess Hill appearing, so I'm now applying the brakes.
At Burgess Hill we need to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform and all trains, whether 4, 8 or 12 coaches, all have to stop at this sign. Departing Burgess Hill, the starting speed limit is still 90 miles per hour. However, with just over three quarters of a mile to go to the next stop, Wivelsfield, we won't actually be able to get to that speed before we have to slow down again. As we approach Kima Junction and now shutting off power, here at Kima Junction the line from Eastbourne, Seaford and Lewis joints. And I'm now braking for the station at Wivelsfield. Again the stopping point is right at the other end of the platform. Departing Wivelsfield, the starting speed limit is still 90 miles per hour, and we've got just under 3 miles to go to the next stop, which is Haywards Heath.
As we pass under this tall overbridge, we're now one and a half miles from Haywood Heath, and I'm going to idle the power at the next signal, which we're now passing. Approaching Haywards Heath Tunnel, and I'm going to apply the brakes for Haywards Heath Station just as we enter the tunnel. Once again, the stopping point in a 12 coach train is right at the end of the platform. Departing Haywood Heath, the starting speed limit is still 90 miles per hour, and we've got around 27 and a half miles to go to the next stop, which is East Croydon. Diverging to the right is the short Ardinglai branch. Today this branch only sees freight trains and only very occasionally. Now crossing Ooze Viaduct.
We're now passing Bolcombe Station. shortly be entering Balkan Tunnel. At the other end of this tunnel the speed limit drops to 80 miles per hour so we're going to break on the AWS ramp for the signal halfway through the tunnel. Now that we've crossed the AWS ramp I've just shut off the power to allow the train to coast. And I will apply light braking just before we leave the tunnel to ensure that we've slowed down to 80 miles per hour. We will shortly be crossing Balkan Tunnel Junction. This is where the two tracks become four, and we're then four track all the way into London. slow lines will shortly be diverging to the left. We have slowed down slightly more than I planned and the speed limit has now gone back up to 90 miles per hour so I've reapplied full power to accelerate towards that. Approaching Three Bridges Station, joining us from the left is the line from Horsham, the Arran Valley line, which ultimately comes from the West Coastway route and Portsmouth Harbour. On the right, the large building is Three Bridges Signalling Centre. Three Bridges Signalling Centre controls the signalling on the Brighton main line from just north of East Croydon all the way to Brighton. now have a double yellow signal aspect so I've shut off power and I'm going to slow the train down to around 60 miles per hour.
as you can see the single yellow signal that we had has just turned green so I'm now going to accelerate back up to the line speed of 90 miles per hour We're now passing through Gatwick Airport Station We're now passing through Hallway. We'll shortly be passing Salford Station. You can just see the platforms on the left there. The platforms here at Salford's are only on the slow lines. We now have a warning for a speed reduction to 80 miles per hour. This warning is just over half a mile from the limit itself, so I'm now shutting off power to allow the train to coast. And we're now passing Earlswood Station. Again, there are only platforms on the slow lines now, though you can see a platform on the first line to our right that is now overgrown and abandoned. We're now entering the 80 mile per hour speed zone we're going to be going down as steep as 1 in 93. So I'm going to allow the train to coast into Red Hill Tunnel, just coming up. And the speed limit goes up to 90 miles per hour entering the tunnel. And now going to apply power to accelerate. As we exit Red Hill Tunnel, we're now going to start going uphill on a gradient of 1 in 111. This will affect our acceleration rate.
are now crossing the M25, which is London's orbital motorway. And we will shortly be entering Quarry Tunnel, which is the second longest tunnel on the line. Exiting Quarry Tunnel, we now have a warning for a temporary speed restriction of 70 miles per hour. These are speed limits which, as in the name, are not permanent and they're usually put there by track engineers in the wake of engineering works. So the 70 mile per hour temporary speed limit here is at Star Lane, where the slow lines pass under us to re-emerge on the right hand side and rejoin us at Purley. So we're now in the 70 mile per hour speed zone and we're now crossing these slow lines. The T that you can just see on the yellow board there stands for termination. That is the end of the temporary speed restriction. So I'm now going to accelerate back up to the line speed of 90 miles per hour. now passing through the covered way which actually used to be a tunnel called Cane Hill Tunnel until the roof was removed. The slow lines are now rejoining us on the right. Now joining on the left is the line from Tattenham Corner. This will leave us soon, pass under us and then re-emerge on the right at Purley. Also joining us at Purley on the right is the branch from Caterham. We're now passing through Purley Station. Now passing through Pearly Oaks Station. We now have a warning for a speed reduction to 60 miles per hour. The warning is just over three quarters of a mile from the limit itself. 
going to apply light braking at this next signal. Speed limit is now down to 60 miles per hour, however I'm going to continue to coast as there are further speed reductions coming up shortly. We're now passing through South Croydon station. Joining us on the right just before the station is the lines from East Grinstead, Uckfield and Oxstead. signal. I'm now braking for the 45 mile per hour speed limit just coming up. And then shortly after that there will be a further speed reduction to 30 miles per hour. And just before entering the platform, as we're going into platform 1 here at East Croydon. As we cross the point just coming up and go to the left, I'm now going to apply the brakes for the 30 mile per hour speed restriction. Once again here at East Croydon, we do need to stop right at the end of the platform. Departing from East Croydon, the starting speed limit is 30 miles per hour, and we've got around 10 and one third miles to go to the final stop, which is London Victoria. The speed limit quickly rose to 45 miles per hour, leaving East Croydon. However, we can't accelerate to that yet, so I'm now shutting off power until we pass the 60 mile per hour speed board just coming up. And now that we've passed that board, I can accelerate up to the 60 mile per hour speed limit.
As we reach 60 miles per hour, I'm going to temporarily shut off power and allow the train to coast, just until we're able to accelerate further. We're now passing through Selhurst Station. Speed limit has now gone up to 70 miles per hour. I'm just going to accelerate at this house on the left. I'm only using step 3 power to get us to 70 miles per hour because once we're at that speed I'm going to have to shut off the power and allow the train to coast down to about 65 before reapplying power again. Unfortunately it's actually very difficult to maintain a speed in this train. Now passing through Thornton Heath. As we now reach 70 miles per hour, I'm shutting off power. To reapply again once we reach 65. We're now passing Norbury. We now have a warning for a speed reduction to 60 miles per hour. As we now pass through Streatham Common Station, I'm going to apply the brakes for the 60 limit at the signal just here at the end of the platform. Now going to allow the train to coast down to about 55 miles per hour before reapplying power back up to 60, much in the same way as I was doing previously when at the 70 mile per hour speed limit. So now the speed is dropping to 55 miles per hour and I'm reapplying power up to step 3.
We're now passing through Ballam Station. We're now passing through Wandsworth Common. We're now approaching Clapham Junction Station. By the number of train movements through the station, this is Britain's busiest railway station, though not by passenger numbers, which I believe is London Waterloo. Unfortunately, it will lag a little more here due to the number of trains in the area. I'm allowing the train to coast now, as the speed limit shortly after the station will be going down to 45 miles per hour. have the warning for the speed reduction 245 which is just under half a mile from the limit itself. the 45 mile per hour speed board just coming up so I've just braked just to ensure that we slow down to that and if we put the power in step two that should maintain us at roughly 45 miles per hour according to the speedometer as I said there is a discrepancy between that and the HUD if you were driving with the HUD but driving like this step two maintains 45 about right although rounding this curve we will shortly be climbing at 1 in 37 which is a steep gradient and will cause us to lose a little bit of speed. see Battersea Power Station just ahead of us, one of London's most famous landmarks, and just as we round this curve to the left, we will be passing through Battersea Park Station, which is the last station before London Victoria.
They are now shutting off power as we cross the River Thames. The speed limit is dropping to 40 miles per hour, just the other side of this bridge. So now applying the brakes to slow down for that. And then shortly after that, the speed limit will be dropping again to 20 miles per hour. As we head towards London, Victoria now, we're going down on a gradient of 1 in 61. Which is a fairly steep gradient, so I'm applying harder braking now to try and ensure that we slow down in time for the 20 mile per hour speed limit. I'm going to continue braking below 20 down to about 15 miles per hour to allow the train to coast up in speed as we're still on the steep downward gradient. We're now entering the 20 mile per hour speed zone and the 17 above the signal indicates that we're cleared into London Victoria, platform 17. The gradient has now levelled out. So I'm just going to coast at around 20 miles per hour and then slow to 15 as we enter the platform. I just gave us a bit of power for a brief moment there as I felt we were coming in just slightly too slowly. So as we stop here at the end of the platform, we need to stop just as the red lights on the buffers disappear to the right side of the windscreen. Arrival at London Victoria. Thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed the video.